I'm Diana Wentworth, and I'm so excited to be with you. I'm the co-founder of the Inside Edge Foundation for Education. It's been a forum for thought leaders and all kinds of people who are activists in the world where they meet and greet and expand who they are. And we've been recording 1,500 of our past speakers. And we're going to take the very best of these and offer them on our YouTube channel. We're starting to post them weekly. So what you wanna do is go to our YouTube channel and to subscribe to it, and you'll get all kinds of information about what we're offering. It's so thrilling to be offering this legacy to you now. It feels really good. So let's see, Robin, let's go into our meditation, shall we? And you can, um, you're really good at this and I'm really looking forward to a way of just bringing us all together just for a few moments and setting our intentions for a great meeting. Thank you, Diana. Yes, I love this part too. This is one of our traditions at Inside Edge that we just take a few, couple of moments at the beginning of our time together and bring ourselves fully present and um, just let go of what else it was in our minds and shift our frequency, shift our attention down into our heart and into this present moment. So I know you all know how to do this, but it's always a little more powerful when we do it together in a group. So I invite you to join me to close your eyes. <sighs> Take a few nice, deep cleansing breaths and settle into this space, this chair that will be your home for the next 90 minutes. Notice if there's any minor adjustments you might want to make to align your body so that your energy flows really nicely and easily. And with the next few breaths, just imagine your exhales releasing any tensions, anxieties, worries, thoughts that you don't need in this moment. And with your inhales, invite yourself to expand the energy of your heart center. Feel your unconditional love and your compassion and your healing presence, just filling your body. Hmm. And now let's imagine in our mind's eye, all the other beautiful souls in this group this morning, in their light bodies, in their beautiful frequencies around us and with us. And let's extend our heart-centered energy to each of them, to each other creating a circle or perhaps even a web, a web of connection, energetically joining, enhancing, amplifying this beautiful collective energy that we're forming this morning. It's like a well, a well where we can drink, we can receive exactly what we need most today and we, where we can also reflect and sit and be replenished. And let's set an intention personally for anything you'd like for this day, knowing that this group energy will support the manifestation of exactly what is perfect for you. And in the spirit of the fall season, allow to fall into the well, anything you don't need, anything that's extra or burdensome in the day, let that just go. And being now aware of your enhanced vibratory frequency, your presence, your beauty of your soul radiating out and all of the love and support around us. 
we have a sense of gratitude for whatever guidance brought us to this morning, for our beautiful bodies, for our, our ability to, to be here, to be in this unique place, in this unique moment in time. Now, take a breath or two more and begin to come back to awareness of your own room, your own personal space, and open your eyes and connect back to the beautiful people in this circle, in this group. I get the honor today of introducing Penny. I am super, super excited to have her here today. Penny has become one of my most precious spiritual teachers. I only discovered her in 2018 when I read her book, Transparency, and I've read a lot of transformational <laughs> authors, but she is one of the best. She makes, made me zing with ahas throughout the book. And uh, so we did invite her in 2020 to come be with us at Inside Edge, and our members voted her the most inspirational speaker of the entire year. So of course, we invited her back, and we are thrilled that she took us up on that invitation. And here we are after months of looking forward to this. So Penny is um, a visionary and a clairvoyant and an empath, someone who's been very involved in consciousness research for decades. She's written, I don't know, I think I counted 11 or 12 books on her website. Um, and she has this gift of being able to take complex issues around consciousness and spirituality and make them uh, understandable and simplified uh, to for, for some of us who need a little, uh, a little bit of that. So anyway, she is a transformational author and a speaker and a coach, and there's all kinds of wonderful ways she contributes her energy in the world, which she'll tell us a little about later. But please help me in giving a very warm, energetic welcome to our beautiful Penny Pierce. <laughs> Thank you guys so much. I appreciate hearing that. It does my heart good. <laughs> and thank you all for showing up today in this kind of this dream of this dream class, <laughs> you know, because I kind of think everything really is a dream here in the world. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more soon. Um, but dreams have been one of my major vehicles for learning or let's say remembering a lot of knowledge. Um, since I was in my 20s, I guess, I've had pretty profound teaching dreams and visionary dreams, which I didn't know what they meant for a long time until things started being revealed. And then I'm going, oh, wait, I already dreamed that, you know, and I understand how that works. And um, <clears throat> they, it's like I have the, the memory of those dreams sort of in my aura, you know, the ones that I didn't understand yet, I kept them so that I could refer back. So I didn't let myself forget about them. And I still do that. It's like, oh, and they, they pop in like whole new realities and I'm back in it again. But it's, um, I think it's such a, a fascinating um, area to explore and, and try to master really, because, you know, Dreams have often been called the little death, you know, which sounds awful, but I think it's actually wonderful because I don't think there's any death. I think there's just physical life and non-physical life. <laughs> and so dreams are a way that we get to remember and refamiliarize ourselves with non-physical life. Like, uh, you know, what's going on inside of our physical life or inside of matter, behind the scenes of our uh, daily activity. So that led me to really think about 24 hour consciousness, because, you know, I, I, I used to think like, well, we think we're awake during the day, and we're not awake during the night, but actually, we're awake all the time, different kinds of consciousness, you know, so during the daytime, we're generally, um, I, you know, and I always talk about the ball, 
you know, how our reality is like a big sphere around us. And in that sphere, everything exists. And there actually is nothing beyond that. But the, you can expand it. And then you're just becoming aware of more of yourself. But it hasn't actually been outside you at all. It's just your zoom lens has been able to move through that big body of knowledge and focus on different amounts of it. So, um, but during waking reality, our zoom lens has come down a bit to a slower frequency, not taking in as much time or space or dimension. And we're able to focus on tasks and doing things here and creating things physically. But then you kind of kick back or space out and you look out the window and your ball expands and now your dream or that reality you're having inside that ball um, takes in more, uh, you know, sometimes more abstract thinking, not so much concrete physical stuff. Now you become more emotional or more mental or you actually meditate and go out into the spiritual realms, you know. So we do this all day long, really. But during the day, we are mainly thinking we're a body, you know, a personality separate from other bodies and personalities in this 3D world. And we forget that unified realm of the non-physical life where everything exists simultaneously and you use your attention to move through things and anything's available. But when you go to sleep at night, you forget the physical realm and remember that one, the non-physical one. It's almost like, you know, it's like REM sleep. When you're dreaming, your body's paralyzed, right? And then when you are coming back into your body from those higher cycles of, of consciousness, your body tosses around and now you're not dreaming or remembering that realm again. So, so we oscillate, but my thought is, let's try to unify these a little more, you know, these worlds. And to do that, uh, I think we can develop a practice of 24 hour consciousness where during the day we try to be mindful of, you know, and join in with the reality, merge with it, feel it as something that is being co-created with us by us and by our collective consciousness. We're in this flow of it. And it's a dream too. It moves as quickly and easily as you do in your dream world. If you don't stop it, you know, with your left brain. <laughs> so, uh, so, but to merge in through mindfulness with the physical 3D reality. And then as you get to the end of that experience, at the end of the day, you're going to make a transition into the nighttime reality. And a good thing to do then is to kind of do the daily review right before you go to sleep. How did I do today? Was I, um, did I live up to my ethics? Did I, was I kind to people? Did I uh, go into fear? Is there something I could, didn't do today that I wanted or needed to that I could do tomorrow? And so just kind of tidy up the day. And then that completes that experience. And then you turn your attention to what you want to do during the nighttime dream experience, which is maybe I'd like to go visit my relatives. I'd like to do some work in a hospital or go to a gathering somewhere that's focusing on something or other. You know, there's so many things we do at night. Uh, and it might be to heal yourself of something, you know, so many things. And then we can program that, and I'll give you a technique in a little while. Um, we can program that to send ourselves consciously into that experience. Then we have that experience. Sometimes you could have it lucidly where you're aware of having it while you're having it, but other times it's, it comes in as a memory just as you're waking up. And it's, this very strong dreams often happen in the early morning hours. So then you need a kind of, a, I guess, a ritual, a, you know, a process for making the transition from the nighttime reality back into your daytime reality. And that is like, wake up slowly, you know, let yourself have those sort of hypnagogic states where you're sort of here and sort of there, 
and don't try to wake up really fast, you know, like to a big alarm clock. Let yourself slowly bring back and then get in the habit of saying, oh, what was I just doing? Oh, I have these, these impressions, these images. Oh, now I remember what I was doing. And then also to make a ritual out of it, it really does help to have a dream journal, something physical that you can write. If you don't remember the whole dream, you can write fragments, the symbols, the whatever little bits and pieces of it, but write something because that's the physical grounding that tells your body, I mean it. When I say I want to remember my dreams, <laughs> I mean it. And here's the proof, I'm actually doing it. And if you don't remember a dream, I always say, just make one up, you know, just like, or, or write down the first thought you have of the day, anything, it doesn't matter because, you know, the sort the subconscious mind can't stand a half truth. So if, if you, you know, say you're going to do it and you only do it partially, or it's not quite the thing you ask for, do it three times. And pretty soon you'll be right on track with what you ask for. You know, so it takes some discipline if you're not remembering your dreams to bring them back and write them down and then make your transition to the day consciously. So what I didn't finish such and such yesterday. So now that's on my to do list. And I want to, you know, stay in my home frequency or my joy body, you know, today I want to uh, get involved with what's happening in my life and see what the hidden messages are, whatever it is for you. Uh, and, and then wake, get going, you know? So what this does, if you would do this for like a week, end of the day into dreams, end of dreams into the day, you'll find that the themes are cycling through. There are parallel themes that you may be working on certain things in your nighttime reality and in, in your nighttime dreams that you couldn't get at in your daytime reality because your left brain wouldn't let you access it. It's maybe too scary or, or something you never wanted to face, but you can during dreams. <laughs> There's no, no uh, monitor there. It's all open. So then if you bring it back in, you might find that you're having what I call a waking dream or an omen or a symbolic experience in your daily reality that's very much like a dream that might be very related to the things you were dreaming about. So make notes of those things, especially during the day. And this is just an amazing practice. How many of you do something like this already? Just raise hands, yeah. Oh, good. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's a simple thing. And, um, but it starts to get you the sense that, um, that you're expanding and contracting and expanding and contracting and oscillating and breathing through the whole big body of knowledge that, that is us um, constantly. And even when you're awake, you know, you're focused on a task and then you space out. And then you kind of come back and where was I? Oh, now I'm you know, doing, and you're bringing back with you at that moment, some material or information from the imaginal realm and the dream realms. When you, when you, you know, have you ever shuddered when you, <laughs> after you've been spaced out, it's like you're coming back into your body. So you're bringing high level, high frequency level information back with you. And if you, would know that that is what you're doing, you could start to remember it, okay? So that is, that is, is so important to me. Um, and I really feel that every single dream you have is about your process of evolution. So there, that's what we're here for. We, we involved ourselves by coming into form and 3D reality and learning how it works here learning to find the spiritual realm inside matter. And now we're evolving back into full knowledge of our spiritual reality and our spiritual self. And we're doing it now while we're in the body. We're becoming enlightened in the body. So in that regard, to me, there is no such thing as a bad dream. 
you know there's we have nightmares we have scary dreams we have uh, things that are oddly uncomfortable sometimes but they're all symbolic of something that if you're looking at it from the subconscious view it's something that you're trying to clear and it might be an idea from your parents, or it might be a past life memory, or it might be a collective consciousness thing that's swirling around in the media, you know, uh, that you're tuning into and going and is kind of looking at it, going, is this real? Is this, do I even want this idea at all? I mean, do I want to relate to it? So you're, you're working on clearing a lot of things. And then of course the super conscious view where you're so clear and you're moving out into some of the very high levels, you'll often have guidance from a guide or teacher or a, a voice talking to you about something or visions of some kind that are, you know, big teachings for you. I'm sure you've all had that because, you know, even flying dreams <laughs> are those kinds of teachings. You know, I think flying dreams are often the activity of expanding your consciousness out beyond the physical realm. Depending what you're flying in, you know, if, if you're flying in a, a, a biplane, you're a little closer to the earth, earth to your, your daily life. If you're flying in a jet, it's higher up. If you're flying in a rocket, it's really high. You're going out into the higher realms but you're expanding and falling dreams, you're coming back down into your body again, coming back through the zones. And um, so a lot of things that we dream about are actually literal movements of uh, consciousness. That's why all dreams are real. They're not fantasies. You're not just like making it up. We're making everything up. You know, we, this is all imagination. It is, the imaginal realm is the real reality. This is actual movement in the spiritual realm. This is how things work. You're doing it, you're symbolizing it to yourself, but you're actually doing it in the spiritual realm. Do you know? So, it's you know, it's real. not like we don't know how to do these things. This is where we come from, you know? Part of understanding uh, this movement that we have through the the big ball of our you know our our present moment reality our you know and it is our our mind really um, is that there are these different dream zones and i know robin you've got a hand up let me i think i've got it here so i will open it up but but think of it like you know you have the physical zone and it's a little smaller and tighter and denser energy moves more slowly it's the frequency is a little lower as you expand your ball you become aware of your etheric body your energy body the 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 parallel level of the physical plane that gives rise to or i call it the inner blueprint sometimes that gives rise to the physical form then if you expand beyond that you go into the emotional zone and as you get, I think, closer to the emotional zone, I, I always sense that this is divided into two levels. The lower emotional has more fear in it. And that's where we have all of our superstitions and, you know, anxieties and things like that. And then the upper emotional is more the super conscious, where you're having basically electromagnetic energy, attraction, movement, desire the, the uh, motivation, and it's not negative at all. It's about fluidity and movement and oscillation. Then as you expand beyond that, you get into the mental zone. And again, that has a lower and an upper vibe too. It has the, the lower vibe of the mental is fear-based where you have fixed beliefs and, and things, ideas that don't change and you're locked into your left brain and stuff like that. The upper level of the mental would be more um, spiritual, where you're having inspiration and revelations and guidance from teachers and the sense of memory of higher level thought and wisdom, you know, and there's no fear at all in that realm. And as you move beyond the mental realm, 
you go into what I call the causal realm, causal zone, where, uh, and it's kind of a general idea here, but it's sort of where, where your purpose lies, where your level of a sense of self as a soul, both individually and collectively. Because the farther out you go, the less um, fixed you are in your individual personality identity. The, the more you open up and go out, the more you share knowledge and energy with others. And as you get really far out, you become one with almost everybody, you know, and all forms of life. That's where that unity comes in. So we're moving in and out through this, and we have the capacity to do that by being alive physically, which is a great gift. Um, you can see on the top part of it here, this little black dot is the physical. It's where your conscious mind is identifying in this realm of your ball and saying, I am physical. And, and uh, you know, I do, I sense, I act, I have, and this is our reality. As you expand your frequency a little more, you go out to the next ball, and this is where I am emotional. I feel, I want, I need. As you expand even more, we go down, and, and now we're, I am mental, and there's a lot more territory now. Big ideas, all kinds of knowledge, Past and future all exist, all ideas, all realities. And then as you keep expanding, you get into the causal realm, which is the, the uh, diagram at the bottom right on the second little block there. And now you have all of that and you see the big picture. Now, often when we're dreaming from that higher plane, from that, that causal plane, you're looking at the trajectory of your life often. And there are many ways that you could go to get a certain lesson that you need, like maybe let's say five or six different possible paths that you could take to get there. And you actually feel them all and run down those paths and you know it and you can feel how it might work. And then when you come back to your body again and wake up in the morning, um, some time may pass and then you'll have deja vu experiences, which in my experience, it is the memory of having taken one of those paths when you were out testing them out and go, and it's usually a mundane thing that you remember. Like I walked down the hall and I turned left and I saw that painting and, and I've been here before, <laughs> you know, and, but these are the facts that we've tested out different ways to get to certain places on the on the timeline so anyway and then at the bottom diagram is kind of like the expanding realm of of dreams that we can go out and we can come back in and the further out we go the more impersonal collective and high frequency fast almost instantaneous experience it becomes as you come down to the bottom in the in the physical it gets slower, it's very personal, individualistic, and you're dealing with form. Okay, I think, um, Robin, you're gonna make this available to them, right, afterward? Okay, great. All right, uh, you know, so I think it's, you know, this whole thing of being a zoom lens on a camera is very important and, that we do it all day long in our conscious mind, we do it all night long. And depending on what we wanna work on, we might stay in the emotional realm for quite a while and work on some issue that we have. You know, for instance, nightmares. You know, often I find that, that my nightmares have been memories of past life deaths or woundings or something where I had a remnant of this, this thing left and I needed to process it out. So it starts to surface so I can work it out in this safe realm of the dream world. And often I have cleared um, it, you know, negative energetic emotional patterns in myself by dreaming them away. So, um, so your sleep dreams, you do a number of different things in the sleep dreams. One, 
I would say these categories um, would be like daily residue dreams, you know, where you are just carrying over a lot of that daytime stuff, a problem that didn't get solved or that you're looking for just some kind of interesting solution to, uh, you know, or something you feel guilty about. And you'll take it over and process it out in the, in, at night. Um, there's also astral travel, which I, I don't know if you've had this, you probably have. It's often a feeling that I've always had it where it's like somebody is visiting me and they're, they feel like they're really there. Like, I know it's a dream, but they feel like I can actually touch their body and hug them. Or I know that they're in the room uh, and, and that sense of reality about it. And, um, and it's, you, you, it's a kind of an intuitive sense, you know, like, you know, okay, this is just, I'm dreaming about this idea, or this is an actual close to physical thing happening. Uh, and, and you can do that. You can program yourself to do that too, to go visit people or do, or do things at night, actually, literally like out of body experiences. Um, there's also, um, lots of recall about past life experiences and precognitive kinds of things, because in that ball, the past and future are all in the present moment, right? <laughs> you don't have to you know, say the past is gone. No, everything's there from all your lives. And so you have access to these things. And when it's time for you to know about them, they will surface up into your conscious mind. And then, you know, precognitive things. I think we all have had dreams. I've like dreamed about, you know, 9-11 beforehand. A lot of people did. Um, and it's often events that have some kind of big emotional impact. Like it sends out waves and you'll pick up on it because you're picking up energetic waves. You know, it's energy information. Um, how many of you have had that? Past life recall and precognitive kinds of dreams. Anybody want to share anything? Any one of them? Um, Penny, hi. Yeah, hi. It's Liz. Hi, Liz. Um, I've had past life dreams. Um, I had one about a year ago, and I was dreaming that I could hear the hum of planes the way they happened in the world in the war yeah. and at, at that precise moment I knew and felt that I was gonna there was gonna be an explosion and I was gonna die uh -huh. and it was so real and I remember talking to someone who's um, a wise owl like you and they said it could just be me processing a past life that needed to be completed hadn't been completed it but it was it was become, yours or wasn't yours I had your that past life. yeah I don't know I think it was <laughs> yeah yeah okay um because I think yes, sometimes, it was, yes it was it was mine yeah yeah uh, I think it's possible to pick up on other people's lives too if they if they parallel something a theme in your own evolution that you'll pick up on neighboring kind of incidents that are similar but it doesn't matter it's still you're clearing your own issue you know, but that's a very common with the past life um, dreams where you feel it's so real. Often when you're dreaming about a big event, it's not always literal, you know, of all it's like you think it's something else. You don't know ahead of time in your conscious mind that this is an actual thing that's going to happen. You think it's symbolic of something else or, you know, whatever. But and then it turns out that, oh, my gosh, it was real. Uh, so, okay, so we've got the past and future that are all in the present. And then we've got all these psychological processing and energy processing type dreams where we're working literally with energy. And Diana, you had a great one with your ocean and the surfing thing. Do you want to share just a little bit about that? Because I thought that was fascinating. Okay, I, I love this dream. I, it felt really important to me. Uh, I dreamt it was my birthday and that Ted and I went near the ocean and Tim showed up and I was so happy to see him and he seemed really larger than life. 
And he went into the water and was diving really deep. He'd see a wave coming, a big swell coming. So he'd go under it and then he'd see it again and he'd go under it. And he brought a surfer along with him who had blonde hair and he was down the beach. And suddenly down by that surfer, this huge round column of water that was maybe 200 feet high and 20 feet in diameter shot straight up into the air because of some power. Uh, that that surfer had. And then afterward, we're all sitting in a Woody uh, station wagon, you know, kind of a surfing car, <laughs> laughing. And a, this very small man in a, in a trench coat came through and he looked at us and he said, you think it's a big deal, but we're on to you. <laughs> and it was like he was telling us that we're being observed. So all that seemed really emotional with all that water and everything. What do you think? Yeah, well, I, we talked about this before, but I think that you're showing yourself a lot about how to work with emotions, but also with energy itself. Like the diving through the waves, you don't have to get pounded around by them. There's a way to move right smoothly through, you know, out external chaos. And the, the surfer with the column of water, that there's many things we can do with our consciousness and att attention to direct the flow of energy to, to take shapes, to do what we, we want with it, you know? And then I have had a little guy in a trench coat in my dreams too. It's like the, uh, gives you my, my upgraded orders of what I'm supposed to be doing, but he's like uh, from the soul group or something, you know, it says, uh, we are watching you, you know, and you really don't know what you're capable of, but here it is, you know, you oh, can develop like these abilities, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. So I think that's one of those energy processing dreams. Thank you. So, yeah. Um, and then, of course, we have visions and guidance and almost like sometimes instantaneous healing in the dreams. Or we get told about, oh, you have a tumor or a dark spot. Go to the doctor. You know, you'll you have all these kinds of of guidance dreams like that. Um, and. As you get out into the higher realms, you don't remember symbols the same way. Like down near the emotional zone, you may dream of a muddy river going down over rocks or something, you know. But out at the higher causal plane and higher mental plane, you might dream about geometry. You might see a triangle or a number or something that doesn't seem like it's really anything, except it's a whole reality at that level. I once dreamed that I was, uh, uh, when I woke up, I felt like I was sort of a mermaid or something. And I had these scalloped fish scales all over my body. And I thought, I was like, this is so weird. But then I remembered that just a minute ago, I had been in that reality of what that was. And then, of course, I couldn't remember what it was, but it was like I was in the scalloped thing, you know, of it. So we'll bring it back. And as it goes, comes in through our repertoire, you know, we will symbolize it in various ways. But if you're dreaming in numbers and geometry and patterns like that, um, it's you're usually out at a pretty high level. All right. Now, then, when you wake up, you're having waking dreams. And that could be daydreams while you're you know spacing out or fantasizing um, you can have especially these kinds of experiences in your waking you know reality that seem like omens they have a psychic weight to them i remember driving back from las vegas to san francisco one time and i found three great horned owls dead on the road and stopped and picked them up and brought them home. And I'm like, this is weird. You know, <laughs> like I had to think this is like a, exactly like a dream, you know, and, uh, you know, owls and wisdom and the number three. And, and, and I, I made, I did things. I took their wings. I made stuff out of it, but later, but, um, but that was a real life experience. And then of course you have your deja vu and, um, sort of a, a sense of visions for your life. Like, oh, I get it. I see it now, how it needs to happen. Or I sense that this choice is better than that choice. I can, you, know, you can see it happening. Like it's, you're in the little movie of choice A or choice B. So we're doing that during the day as well. 
you know, our mind goes in and I think it's directed by what I call our inner perceiver, or that would be maybe the soul in the body or your Holy Spirit or whatever you like to call it. But that we have um, that function inside of us that causes us to notice what we need to notice, you know. Um, so, you know, what's inside your reality is also what's outside your reality. And I think dreams and interpreting dreams can help you understand that, the, the connection between the inner and outer. So um, we wanna talk a little more about dream recall. I mentioned a little bit before about waking up slowly and, uh, but at, before you go to sleep, you wanna create a magnet, some kind of, uh, I don't like to use the word intention anymore I, I because it futurizes things. I, I'd like to say I make a choice. I create a magnet of something I want and I can feel it. Um, and, and then to create that and then have follow through on it afterwards when you get it. It's so important to create, to complete that cycle. But, and then of course have the journal or a tape recorder and, um, when you write things down, I think it's important to title your dreams, like it synopsizes it a bit, you know? Um, but one of the most useful methods for remembering dreams uh, came from a tech person in the Silicon Valley. <laughs> and she told me that what you do is you imagine a little ball of light, like about the size of a golf ball, and you put it in the back of your neck, back here, down in your, near your reptile brain. You imagine just sticking it in there and letting it sit in there. And inside that ball, you put a sentence, like, and especially this one works really well. In the morning, when I wake up, I'm going to remember my most important dreams. It's important to be specific because if you don't say in the morning when I wake up, you'll wake up at 2 a.m. or 3 a.m. I'm going to remember my most important dreams so that you're not flooded with all, all of this stuff, perhaps, that you just can zero in on what you really need to know. And I always think of it like a, you know, like a tiny time capsule, <laughs> like <laughs> that you put it in there and it dissolves during the night and sends that suggestion into your reptile brain or your subconscious. Very easy. And then in the morning, it's pretty effective. It's pretty easy to like when you remember, oh, I did that ball thing last night. Oh yeah, here, here I am in the morning when I wake up. Here's an important dream. If it doesn't work the first time, just do it again. Do it like at least three times. Consistency, you know, and, and pretty soon it'll start working. So that is a really important thing. And um, I'm trying to squeeze an awful lot in here and <laughs> we can talk about it in a minute, but um, then the important part really then is interpretation, right? Um, and I think two levels, first of all, that dreams are often multi-leveled things. They can relate to your personal symbology of what you have known and think about things, um, or they can relate to archetypal symbology. Right, so if you dream about a snake, you know, for me, that's a symbol of life force energy and the caduceus and, you know, all kinds of great stuff um, and, and a certain kind of power and truthfulness, really. Um, and yet experiences with snakes that have scared you in the past may, have, may make you back off from understanding the true meaning of that symbol. You might be scared of the energy, you know, or something. But so you need to look at it both ways to see if your personal level of meaning is affecting the archetypal meaning at all and connect them. Uh, then notice what zone was I dreaming this in? Was this in the emotional or lower emotional, upper emotional? Was it a um, an, an, uh, higher, you know, am I trying to look at something about my life purpose from those higher realms? past lives, from the Akashic records, whatever that's out there, you know, 
Um, and, and what sort of category was I working on processing, learning about energy work or clearing emotions? No, see, what was the core thing that you were actually doing? And then I would make a list of the key symbols that were in the dream in the order that they came. And then the feeling states that you had as you went along. And any actions you took. Okay, so symbols, feeling states as that went along, and then actions that you took. And often this will really help you get a sense of, again, more about what you were literally doing in that realm. Um, also, um, this can be a personal process of something that's going on in you, and it can be an energy process, kind of like Diana's dream. Maybe you, Diana, you were working on learning that you could raise a column of energy out of water, you know, out of the ocean like that, that there's, you're capable of kind of amazing things, but also you're looking at how energy works somehow, you know, two things. Uh, and then how is this an aspect of me? Or how do I already have this quality in myself? And, and go in and like, um, how would I feel if I were using it to, you know, the way I would like to use it to the max. And then finally, how could it be literal? How could this actually be something that could happen like a, a precognitive dream or something I'm picking up on like you know, raising that water out of the, it could be a tidal wave even somewhere in the world, you know. Um, so do I need to repeat those for you? Archetypes, personal symbology, um, what zone, what category, uh, list of your symbols, feelings, and actions. Is it about your own internal process or a general energy process in the world? Um, and is it an aspect of you? And could it be literal? If it were literal, what might it be? Okay, so um, let's see. Do we want to take any questions right now or would we like to start interpreting a few? I think you were going to ask uh, a couple of people to share a dream and then yeah. we will have questions and answers after okay. that. Great. So who has something that's not a long shaggy dog story, but <laughs> a succinct dream that we can all get, relate to? Anybody? Hi. Oh, okay. Stephanie. Hi. Hi. I mean, it's not uh, hi, my name is Stephanie. Um, I've got one, but it's not a sustained dream. But as you were talking, it just came back to me. Mm. It was uh, well, it was a while ago. I still remember it. So I woke up in my son's room and I looked to my left and I knew there was so that's that's his room because his drawing is on there and I suddenly saw a bunch of bats coming out of their wall like just flew out mm -hmm. and I was like whoa what's that and then as I was looking my attention uh it brought brought me to my eyes was like saw someone outside the window it's really far kind of far away, uh, it turned out to be my husband. He was in his, you know, just his hoodie, not looking very happy. But there are a lot of, he's like, he's standing in the middle, in the crowd. So I was like, oh, I walked closer, I looked at it, I was like, huh. And then suddenly I saw a branch landed on my hand. It was like, I was like, okay. It turned out to be like an olive branch, I'm not sure, but I was like, Oh, that's interesting. But that's that's it. And <laughs> I thought it felt like a vision. It felt yeah. it felt it felt real because I was actually thought it was real when I was streaming it until yeah. later on I was like, no, it's not real. So mm, how interesting. Um, I would ask one thing, did 
your son's drawing have any particular symbology in it that you recall? You just knew it no, was his? No, I, I think the purpose, I, no, it was just, uh, well, he was maybe seven or six at that time. Okay. But, but it was just that drawing reminded, let, let me know that I, I, was, I was in his room. Okay, all right. And then yeah. bats are really a yeah, powerful like, symbol like, of, you know, I like them actually. I mean, they're so psychic and, you know, they have their mm -hmm. radar and they know exactly where they're going and they can navigate things. And I think they're very beneficial you know, mm. but depending on your own personal symbology about bats, you know, a lot of people are afraid of them or mm. they're mm. just cool, you know, mm. <laughs> but they, they might like have it. been a certain thing that was helping guide you into a new kind of perception. Mm. If you think about what they actually do and what they actually are with their energy, and then you think, could I be like that, you know? Mm. Be, be, be the go into the symbol of the bats and fly that way and know that way. That could be a, a new ability mm -hmm. for you, do you know? Mm -hmm. And then you go out and you see your husband out there and he's not, he's sort of in a crowd or in a collective consciousness. Mm -hmm. It sounds to me like it wasn't a really high vibration consciousness at the time mm -hmm. that he's kind of, he's hooded, he's not quite open. At that time, it didn't look happy. It didn't, look didn't quite look happy. Look, yeah. and so you're noticing something about him and possibly a group mind that he might be involved with mm. somehow that might be a lower consciousness of, that's affecting him somehow. That's what that's oh, what I, I would see. make out of it. Oh, I see. So it actually can be about him. It can't might not be about me. Right. It's literal. It could be oh, something okay. that you're seeing about him mm -hmm. and you're noticing, right. well, of course it's, you know, in everybody, but, um, but then the, the branch on your hand yeah. comes in and it's giving you a message that this is possible to create peace and balance and integration. <laughs> Does that make sense? That, that makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> I see. And that was given to you out of nowhere. Yeah, it was just landed just, on my outside. Right. Wow. Great gift. So, and again, another skill that you probably have that you can develop. Mm. I'm sorry. What do you mean by that when you say skill? Be a peacemaker. Be a, a oh, person who creates the, the unity. I see. Right? Okay. Maybe see. with your bat consciousness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Okay, great. Thank you. So, yeah, somebody else? Penny, um, just I'll be very quick. Mm -hmm. it, my dream was about money. Mm -hmm. And in the past, when I've had been going through a challenging time, I've, I've had dreamt that I had my purse stolen or was going to the bank to try and get some money out. And nothing came out of the machine. Last week, I had the most amazing dream. I, I was told that I'd won a million pounds and my jaw just <laughs> dropped but then I got told it wasn't just a million it was two million <laughs> so I woke up feeling so excited and speechless um so I don't know what that meant but I, I yeah I just wondered if you had, might have any thoughts about that oh my gosh well it just sounds <laughs> like you've you've made an incredibly powerful internal shift of coming into yourself and feeling lucky and feeling uh, that you can have whatever you need, that wow. there's, you don't have to, you know, be a loser about these things that uh, by showing up, you almost become a magnet yourself. And what? what would you like? Would you like a million pounds? Would you like 2 million pounds? I'd like you a know? lot like, more. Like a... I could use it in a beneficial way. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, uh, you know, you're being told that you have resources. Thank you talent, resources, and so forth. Bless you, thank you. Yeah, That's sure. really lovely, thank you. Penny, we have some <laughs> other people with their hands up. Okay, so why don't you, let's go you with call Marge on Marge Britt, and then we'll go with Karen Phelps, okay? Marge? Okay. Yep, yeah, unmute yourself, there you go. Hi, this is just really, really wonderful. <laughs> And I have a dream that I had in the mid-1990s that has been totally directing my life. 
ever since. And I wanted to just briefly share it with you. I had studied dream work, so I knew to have a pad and a pencil by my bedside. And in the middle of the night, I had this dream and I woke up long enough just to write the symbol and the words. And the symbol was a globe spinning in space, okay. the world spinning mm -hmm. in space. And in front of that world spinning in space were two non-identifiable figures that were beings of light. Mm -hmm. They didn't have physical features. They were just radiant white. Right. I've seen those. <laughs> um, as a result of that, and then the words, you have received the seeds of the universe in the womb of the divine mother. You are bringing forth, giving birth to the manifestation. That was wow. it. <laughs> and I wrote down the words. I wrote a circle and two stick figures and turned over and went back to sleep. I would not have remembered it if I had right. written it down. Right. It was in the middle of, of the night. The next yeah. morning, I looked at it and remembered it. And uh, I've been living it ever since yes yes yeah um it has, resulted, it has resulted in a book it's resulted in a garden site at unity of tustin and this is a picture of my son holding the image that he created in the stained glass oh it's beautiful so yeah at the top so yeah. it almost uh it comes to his uh shoulder height yeah huge stained glass a piece yeah. and it it's changed my entire life one dream right directed an entire lifetime yes given me a glimpse of my soul purpose so yeah. that's yeah it. yeah well it's so profound uh you know it's it's like the two beings are interesting to me um whether that is, um, you know, two archetypal beings that are, you know, very meaningful to you, or maybe it's just the balance of yin and yang. Yeah, I think know, that's, something that's like what that. It means to me, the mystical yeah. marriage, I call that's it. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, which is the heart, you yeah. know, the hierogamous. Yeah. And um, uh, the dodrahedron. Yes, and and but the message is. Um, it, it feels like it's important that you connect it with your femininity, you know, yes. that it's, there's something in about um, being in a feminine body and being able to bring forth um, seeds, you know, to plant seeds, to bring forth life, to do that. And, yeah, and it's the, like the womb. Yeah. Yeah. The, of, of the creativity. Yeah. That's powerful. I mean, Let, it's, let's it's, move on to Karen yeah. Phelps now. Okay, Karen, can you put your unmute yourself, babe? I'm unmuted. Before I <laughs> have a quick dream, I got to show you my very favorite textbook at USM. <laughs> it's underlined dog. Oh, great. <laughs> that was my very favorite. Oh, uh, uh, thank you. Um, I'm on top of a big icy mountain in Alaska, I think. And it's, I'm at a cocktail party. And there's a cocktail table there. And I'm looking down and out this huge, beautiful window is a picture of a bay below, an icy kind of bay, it's cold. And all of a sudden there's this horrendous earthquake. And it feels like I'm gonna end up in the bay below, but I don't. And when I'm all through, with this, and this has lasted for the, about 25 years, I think. I had this 25 years ago. Mm -hmm. And the voice that came through to me was, everything's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The, it, what I would do with that is first, whenever you're in a meeting like that, it could be a cocktail party, it could be a seminar or whatever. It's kind of like you're actually in a your soul group or a collective consciousness of gathering of collective minds that are, and if you're high up on a mountain, 
you know, in the, it's like the North is symbolic of the ancestors and the old knowledge, do you know? So I would say you're, you're working on a gathering of old wisdom there in a friendly environment. And, but you're about, you're on frozen water and down below is water, water, you know? So it may relate to something about emotion, needing to open up into a more fluid kind of feeling state or empathic state, perhaps, you know? And the earthquake is kind of a chiropractic adjustment from on high, you know, <laughs> where you're, you're uh, you know, like whack, you know, open up a, a you know, a, wedge experience for yourself you know to feel that difference you know so it feels like you um basically that dream was you opening yourself up for you know greater reality even though it might seem scary at the time it wouldn't be eventually that's what that's what i would make of it yeah okay i'm just noticing that um, you had mentioned that you wanted to do a guided meditation and we didn't fit yes. that into your, yep. the main thing. Does, how long does it. that take? And can we do it now? Yeah, we can do it now. Um, it's, a, it's a technique we can use to um, get a little more information about dreams. So if you all have a dream that you want to work with, that would be great. And um, so... If you'll close your eyes and get centered, take a couple of nice, easy breaths and bring your attention inside your skin. And just relax and let yourself be kind of porous. Energy can flow in and out through your skin and through your cells. And out in the clear space in front of you, I'd like you to envision your dream as though it's happening again. Just get the idea of it. And then let's pretend it's like a little film strip that you can run from the beginning and go to where it started and let it sort of play through until you stop noticing it and it seems to end. So you've kind of brought that back into your experiential reality. But now let's go back to the beginning and back up the film strip to a little ways before you started remembering the dream. And let your imagination give you something that was happening before you started remembering this dream. And don't judge it with your left brain. Just let it come. Whatever comes, it doesn't matter. It could be you know, how dreams are, it could be something totally silly or anything. So go back to that point where it starts and then start moving the dream forward again. Go through it to the end and then extend it beyond where you stopped noticing the dream. And let yourself know what might else be there. some expanded dimension to it, some extra information. And then as you do that, I'd like you to imagine that you can turn 360 degrees around and see what's to the left of what you're looking at. And then maybe keep turning to the left and look at what's behind you. Keep on going around like a 3D camera and you're coming around to the right side and noticing what, what's over there on the right. Might be a a scene, a landscape, another person, an animal, anything.
Okay. Now I'd like you also one extra little dimensional thing you can do while you're still in that dream, start from the beginning, kind of run it through again smoothly. And this time introduce another character into the dream at any point along the way. Let somebody else show up. And see what they do, if they have something to say, or if they're going to show you something. And notice how it may change the whole flavor of the dream. Run it through to the end. And just remember what this new information is that you've received and come back and open your eyes. You might wanna make some notes while it's fresh, but does anybody want to share, for instance, who was the extra character that showed up and what, how did that shift your dream at all? Maybe somebody who hasn't shared yet. <clears throat> yes. Tim. Yeah, thanks. I, that was a really good process. I, I loved it. Um, <clears throat> I've been doing a Tibetan dream yoga for a long time. And uh, one of the things we do is we work with nightmares as they appear. And I was very lucky in this particular dream a while back, a big dark black wolf was running towards me, uh, growling and snarling. And I said, who's a good boy? And he went <laughs> on his stomach and I started rubbing his stomach and it, it just completely switched everything. And as I was leaving in my car, some people were outside and they said, there goes that man with his angel sitting behind him. So it was as though uh, an archetypal shadow figure got changed inside the dream. And of course, it, you talked about consciousness all the way through day and night. That's the purpose of Tibetan yoga is to understand that the night is completely a dream. It's completely malleable. It, yeah. it, it, and when you understand that, then you see that, oh, the days are the same thing. We're living in our mind. It's yep. it's a dream too. So don't get so upset about things that happen. Anyway, just quickly, I'm there and he's running. All of a sudden, I'm noticing I'm back at childhood in a are park. Are you talking about the wolf? The wolf, yes. Okay, I'm so back you're before childhood the Childhood in, yeah. in a park. And then as I look to my left and right, it was like the Truman Show. If you, <laughs> you saw that I went, this whole thing is a projected Truman show. And then as I was leaving, the person that came up and sat to the right of me was Carl Young. He had the pipe and everything. <laughs> and he was, he was like, uh, very, very good work bringing up the shadow, making it <laughs> conscious. So uh, it was just delightful to add all those pieces to the dream. <laughs> Great. I love it. <laughs> What a good boy. <laughs> All right. How are we doing on time? Well, that just about does it, Penny. Uh, how, can people, how can people learn more about uh, your work and your story and how they can connect with you and learn more? Well, you know, my website is a pretty meaty kind of website. It's got a lot of information on it. Um, so it's just my name, pennypierce.com. There's, um, you know, I have a different kind of interesting bio. I have my past lives that I was given. I've made a bio kind of out of that, you know, oh, and there is kind of a lot of interesting stuff, but uh, I have courses now and uh, event page and stuff like that. Do we have any closing comments that you want to make, um, Penny? Oh, I mean, 
I love this thing about dreams because it really adds a, a kind of a joy element to our life. You know, it's like we, we remember that it's okay to play yeah. and have some fun, you know? So um, yeah, I encourage you to do whatever it takes to try to remember your dreams. And even, you know, even if you just remember a snippet or a fragment of a dream, that's enough to get meaning out of. Mm -hmm. you know? I was told that, everything in our dream is ourself so that is the way I've been kind of amateurishly doing my own dreams because I haven't delved in that deeply is there validity to that yeah that's a certainly one aspect of it you know but also they are um, activities things you're actually doing in other realms mm -hmm. you know okay well this has been enlightening as always and I just want to thank you so much, Penny, for being with us. And, you know, you're always just a, a beam of light. Everybody <laughs> enjoys you so much. We always get such great feedback. 